solo project that I did came from uh, two different instances of conversations or experiences with the idea of sampling and the idea of, of working from fragments of text, but in an improvisational way. One of those was through a conversation with Tarek Atui. One of them was with Boris uh, Sharmatz, the choreographer. Um, so what I did in relation to those was I, I printed my notebook. It's um, about 15 years' worth of writing, basically everything I've ever collected, written down, notes or fragments towards things, bits of movies that I might have seen, uh, bits of dialogue, bits of conversation, uh, invented things, ideas. And what I do in the performance is I kind of try to jump between them and compose something, and I use a lot of repetition. So in a strange way, you know, although this is a, it's a solo performance, um, and it's just with these cards and with, with language, it's also a kind of miniature of, of the compositional process that goes on in many of the shows because you're always dealing with this idea of material that can be put into different sequences. This one's one of my favorites. Um, it says, like musical instruments. They're, they're tears like musical instruments, mountains like musical instruments, trees and their branches like musical instruments. And I like it because it's like this sort of little form that comes amongst all of this chaos. But clearly you can add more things to this. So I also wrote, you see, handwritten packs of dogs like musical instruments, packs of dogs like musical instruments. So you get this introduction of a sort of form, formula or form like musical instruments. And then you can constantly add new things which somehow are supposedly like musical instruments. So it kind of... I suppose it, it, it shows you that there's just a sort of generative force in the formula of the language that once you have this end to the sentence, you can fill in numerous beginnings that, that would shift it radically. You know, To say that trees and their branches are like musical instruments is um, you know, it's kind of obvious in a way. It's, um, it's the sound of the wind in the trees, isn't it? But to say that a mountain is like a musical instrument, how is that possible? You know, it doesn't make any immediate sense. Um, or tears like musical instruments, or crying you could think of as a musical instrument, but tears resists that a bit because it's only a physical thing. What's the sound of a tear? Um, packs of dogs, much more obvious. So I like that, it, that it, it throws up this formula that then it immediately then generates many more kind of questions. The, the other shift that I like a lot in here is the shift between um, sort of sense, if you like, and nonsense. Um, that sometimes things go in this really fast so that, that they become pure texture and pure rhythm. Um, and the meaning of the words gets kind of blown away, but then it will come back. So again, you have this sort of shifting between, for me, language as music, um, language as noise, language as texture, um, rhythm, and then on the other hand, language as kind of semantics, as, as the communication of a particular kind of sense. And just watching in this work how the language kind of moves in between those two things all the time or slips in between those things over the years in different shows where you know on the one hand you're insisting on the sort of semantics of language and the you know the, the nuts and bolts of it as a meaning meaningful process and other times you're watching language sort of slip away into noise or into emotion or into texture in Berlin, I just did this workshop with Boris again and various other people. Um, and I was working a lot with just two words, um, moving words, 
moving words, moving words, moving words, words, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving words, words, moving words, moving words, moving words, moving moving words, 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 moving words. Words moving, 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 moving, words 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 moving. Moving words, 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 words, moving 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 words, direct with people, sometimes just being more like some guy talking to the wall. Um, but again, you know, it's two words, but the, the more you drill down into them, um, the more amazing the sort of possibilities uh, seem to become. Like if you trap yourself, limit yourself, actually there's just so much possibility. Um, I think what's also very interesting for me about these uh, experiments in this work is just that sense that actually the tiniest thing can contain such a wealth of um, different possibilities. Um, I think in the very early days of Forced Entertainment's work, it felt like you know we were desperate that every show had you know. 20 ideas in it, um, if we could think of them. And it feels like as time has gone on, we have a saying, you know, that we, our criticism of ourselves sometimes is, you know, we have 10 okay ideas when, when one good one would do. Um, and I think this work often, you know, you get to a fragment like this, who cares what the future brings when we have tonight? And you just, you kind of realize that there's such an amount of depth in it and possibility that uh, it feels like 10 minutes would be a good amount of time to spend on that sentence um, or those two little fragments because there's so many different ways of, of thinking about them and they, they speak to each other in such nice ways. Um, so I think there's, there's an impulse there to push deeper and deeper into a small thing you know, a small fragment can really contain uh, so much resonance and depth if you give it the time and the space. Um, and it feels like often the impulse is to move on, um, but it feels like in this work there's a possibility to sort of stay on something and really work it until it kind of breaks. Um, I must think about these things as, as making little sculptures uh, in language because by repeating uh, a phrase or a sentence again and again it grows this kind of strange objective existence that it starts to float in the air and to, to sort of resonate um, like you have to hear it again and again and you have to look at it again and again and it, although it's a static thing it also shifts and something very fascinating about that in terms of the perceptual process of the of the viewer as much as it is about the you know sort of alleged virtuosity or, or skill of what you're doing in the performance. It's, for me, what's actually more interesting is the idea of, as a listener or as a viewer, how the thing is slipping and moving around. 